Hello chess friends and welcome to your Zone of Chess channel and welcome back to our hyper accelerated rank Sicilian defense studies. So in these studies we have seen this very nice opening from Black's perspective and today we continue with this defense and the very important approach I think that you face many times. Today we'll analyze how to play against the Marozzi bind uh, from Black's perspective by using the hyper accelerated rank Sicilian defense. So the Marozzi bind I think is a very annoying um, and very the uh, positional approach of whites i think many of us had problems uh to play against this opening i think you you had many headaches by playing against the marotti by because it's not such an aggressive method of whites it's i think a slow build up where white is just improving the position a little bit in every move and if you don't know what to do if you don't know how to play against this marotti bind setups i think you can have uh, many positional problems so in this video i wanted to solve for you this marotti bind with the black pieces but I because I think it's very important to know uh, what to do, at least to have some kind of a preparation, at least to know so, um, some kind of an idea how to play this positional approach of white. So let's see now what is the hyper accelerated rank in the defense and what is the Marozzi bind and how we should play uh, with the black pieces against this annoying positional setup. So after move e4, we're playing the move c5, the Sicilian, and after move knight to f3, uh, I like to go here into the so called uh, hyper accelerated rank Sicilian defense with the move g6 you can of course also go knight to c6 but then you risk maybe this uh, Nishmedino of Ros Rosolino attack with the move bishop to b5 I'm not a big fan of this position with the black pieces because I don't like when it, when I have the double pawn structure maybe on c6 so that's why I try to avoid it by playing this aggressive line with the move g6 no now after d4 c takes d4 knight to d4 knight to c6 there is no a further idea of the Rosalimo Nezmedinov attack because uh, now that we have traded off already the C pawn for the D pawn and now if white wants to pick up your uh, knight with the bishop it doesn't matter he lose the bishop here now after b takes c6 we would have a really healthy pawn structure so we would not have a double pawn structure on the c file so it's now of course a different story so after move knight to c6 now white builds this so-called marozzi bind setup here with the move c4 and already he has played e4 and he has now also the powerful knight on d4 so now my recommendation is to go knight to f6 hitting the pawn on e4 immediately because white could make a mistake now could play maybe knight to c6 after d b takes c6 e5 is not working because of queen to a5 hitting the king and uh, white is losing the pawn so that's why after move knight to f6 your opponent has to play now knight to c3 in order to protect the full pawn on for, uh, further on e4 now we play d6 and the problem for white is that white cannot develop the da uh, darko bishop it's not working for him because now uh, i think black is already taking over look at this with the move d6 we have liberated now the long diagonal for the light square bishop and now we can hit the bishop on uh, with the move knight to g4 if knight takes c6 happens then we have b takes c6 and now after bishop to d4 we can play e5 and still we go of course tra trap the bishop after bishop to e3 knight takes e3 f takes e3 look at this uh, we have now a much much better position bishop to h6 is going to happen queen to g5 this is a weakness queen to b6 so we are dominating now on dark squares although you have maybe um slightly weakness here on on b d6 it doesn't matter uh, it's really hard for white to attack this position i think white has now many many positional problems in the game already so as i said after move knight to g4 your opponent could try maybe this idea knight to c6 b takes c6 and bishop to f4 uh maybe not to play bishop to d4 but it doesn't matter i think again with knight uh, bishop to g7 and then knight to e5 you have a great game you play bishop to e6 rook to b8 queen to a5 uh there is always this tension on the star square diagonal and notice uh that the white knight cannot have access to the d5 square because we have a powerful pawn here on c6 that's controlling the square so now with the central nice knight with the open b file with the queen activity with the dark square bishop activity with the powerful knight in the center i think here black should be already better in the position so that's why after with d6 white needs now to play a preventing move white needs now to prevent your move knight to g4 uh this moves uh, can be prevented with the move f3 which is a common move for the marozzi bind or with the move bishop to e2 so here after move bishop to e2 we play now knight takes d4 and this move is now very important in order to decoy 
uh, the queen to towards the center because after queen to d4 bishop to g7 the queen is hanging now for bishop to e3 um, now there is simply no good uh, discovery first we should castle and now notice when we got decoy when we got the queen decoy here uh, to the square d4 there is always the threat of knight to g4 discovered attack against the queen and now we can then actually finally trap the bishop on e3 so this is now our goal because usually what white is of course doing is uh, this queen and bishop battery uh, and he's trying not to play maybe bishop to h6 will play f3 g4 h4 h5 he's trying to play sort of a it's not the same but it's sort of a yugoslav attack against your uh king side here and he could maybe uh, cause you many tactical problems now here on the, on the king side so as i said he needs to step back now with the move queen to d2 he played already once with the queen but now he has to retreat with the queen to d2 and it's sort of a loss on a loss of tempo which gives us now a great game because now we can play play queen to a5 and your opponent cannot play this common idea of bishop to h6 this idea is not working anymore because we can pick up now the bishop after bishop to h6 queen to h6 knight to e4 look at this you cannot take because of this beautiful queen uh, queen and knight activity here in the center of the board so you see his attacking idea with bishop to h6 is not working immediately so that's why uh, this attack has to be prepared further with the move f3 but now with the develop simply our bishop on e6 and notice in this kind of approach i think we have already a great attacking formation the queen is active the bishop is active this knight will be improved maybe knight to d7 knight to c5 for liberating the long diagonal for the dark square bishop and now what we are trying to do is simply continue the pressure around the square c4 we will simply play rook to c8 a6 b5 so we are playing just an attack against this pawn on c4 this is now in my opinion really one of the best methods to uh, beat the model to bind so here in the continuation kingside castle can of course uh, be your opponent's um, continuation if he plays now knight to d2 uh, pardon me knight to d5 then we play queen to d2 after king to d2 we can pick up the knight in the center of the board and after c takes d5 bishop to d7 I think this is a solid game for black especially because of the fact that your opponent has now a weak pawn on on uh, b2 and i think our uh, activity of our minor pieces is perfectly fine here so the dash for bishop is simply the best piece on the board so i think if white goes now into this particular line that again you have solved many of your positional problems so after move bishop to e6 and casting we are continuing as i said our pressure against the pawn on c4 and now your opponent can do many many things in my opinion the best way for white is to proceed actually with the move a uh, rook from f to c1 because if you play now bishop to c4 then things could get messy after moving knight to d5 still black is perfectly fine here and uh, we can play now queen to d2 your opponent will probably play something like knight to uh, e7 after king to f8 he picks up now uh your um, queen on d2 and you pick up of course here uh the pawn uh the knight on e7 and now he plays something like bishop to c4 and this should be i think a good game here you play then the knight to d7 and now after rook from a to b1 uh black and have i think a solid position here but i think white should be slightly better because of the bishop pair uh, still this is an open battle so this is something that i think we should try to avoid so that's why after move rook from f to c1 i think it's very important now to play maybe a rook to a knight to d7 um not taking out the pawn immediately now we can play ideas of a6 b5 knight to c5 so still we're continuing the pressure but notice always this move knight to d5 could happen but now actually look at this when we play now knight to d7 this move knight to d5 is not working because we'll simply pick up the queen and after bishop to d2 bishop to d5 c takes d5 and now uh finally the pawn on b2 is hanging your opponent will pick up the rook but now after rook to c8 your opponent could try a rook to b1 but now we have access to the second rank we are protecting our bishop and we are attacking now uh, both of these minor pieces so from this point on the game is simply a one-way ticket so you see with the move um after move rook from f to c1 don't play bishop to c4 immediately because there is this tension on the c file your opponent will surprise you with the move knight to d5 so that's why first knight to d7 and then knight to c5 and similar stuff so here uh, after rook from f to c8 what your opponent could make as a mistake is the move b3 and now we have to play really really aggressively notice with this move b3 your opponent has already opened the dashboard diagonal and it's now 
time to use our uh, aggressive approach here by playing a simple a6 and now if your opponent plays again rook from f to c1 now hit, we hit the pawn with the move b5 and this is the way to go b5 seems really like a bad move because you can say now dude what you're talking about the knight is protecting the b5 the pawn is protecting the b5 the bishop is protecting the b5 but actually uh, now the fun actually starts because after your uh, opponent plays maybe the move c takes b5 we have now this one a takes b5 and actually uh, now many many things can go wrong for instance your opponent could try bishop to b5 but now we play knight takes e4 and after f takes e4 look at this bishop takes c3 this position is falling apart Part, your bishop is uh, hanging here on b5 so this is not the way to go so your pawn could try of course knight to b5 but now comes the stunner queen takes d2 look at this after uh, bishop to d2 what we can do of course is now rook takes c1 and look at this what happens after let's see rook takes c1 we have this stunner rook takes a2 the rook is now deflected uh, from the, de uh, the defense of the pawn on a2 and your opponent cannot deliver a check here on c8 because the bishop is covering the square now maybe rook to d1 can be played but now look at this bishop to b3 again the bishop uh, is attacking the rook the rook can maybe attack now the bishop but we pick up the bishop on d2 and after rook takes b3 look at this the knight is standing in the way of a potential check now we play up simply another piece and this should be of course game over here for uh, for white really really a stunning tactic uh, this move queen takes d2 so that's why after move queen takes d2 your opponent should probably go into this line uh, rook to c8 but now after rook to c8 bishop to d2 now we have this stunner knight to e4 look at this uh, the long diagonal for the dark square bishop gets liberated in order to keep uh, somehow some chances in the game your opponent has to play now something like rook to d1 but now we pick up um, uh, here the bishop on d2 after rook to d2 now bishop to h6 look how um, it's easy now to play the game with this beautiful bishop here your opponent can maybe step back here to b2 but now after bishop to e3 look at this we have even this one rook to c1 your opponent has to now give up uh here the bishop loses simply the, the size of material so this is not working if your opponent plays now uh, rook to d3 then we can uh, have access again to the beautiful second rank your opponent could try maybe this one knight to d4 but now first we take out the pawn after knight takes e6 we take first off uh, the bishop the knight has to step back and now after rook to b2 this should be of course a much much better position for black uh, because we can play e6 then maybe d5 of course first maybe protecting the pawn on d6 but now with these two mobile pawns in the center of the board with support of the bishop uh, with the beautiful rook activity here this should be i think completely completely winning end game uh, here for black so as i said uh, after the move let's go back after move b3 we play a6 uh, here rooks to c1 b5 hitting now immediately here on the flanks c takes b5 a takes b5 knight to b5 first we pick up the queen your opponent doesn't have time uh, to pick up the queen because we play simply this one uh, if he takes with the bishop then we have this discovered attack if he plays now uh here with the rook then we have access to the second rank and many of these pieces are hanging so uh he simply lost in order to keep some chances in the game as we said after move queen to d2 he has to play rook to c8 first we play rook to c8 bishop to d2 but now again this method knight to e4 your opponent has to go here knight takes d2 rook takes d2 and now bishop to h6 is i think uh winning the game here for black for sure so this is our study there are of course many sidelines i wanted to just show you this common mistake that can happen in uh, the hyper accelerated ranks in the defense against the marozzi bind uh, use this method i think you have really fun so uh, let's go a little bit fast now through the uh, whole opening so as we said d4 knight to c6 marozzi bind here knight to f6 hitting the pawn on e4 your opponent has to protect it and now with the move d6 as we said your opponent has to play f3 or bishop to e2 after bishop to e2 we hit the knight decoying the queen to the, towards the center bishop to g7 now we play the uh, kingside casting he has to step back and now queen to a5 aggressive method f3 bishop to e6 uh, hitting the pawn on c4 after casting we continue the pressure now we have reached the six, sequence a6 b5 and this should be a good game here for black for sure so okay i hope that you enjoyed the study uh, this is very important uh, the marozzi bind you face many many times be careful there are of course other also some other sidelines for 
uh, white as are possible but this is i think a decent approach you can have very an aggressive game your opponent cannot build this um, normal setup that he usually wants to do in my opinion really really a good good uh, solid line here for black so okay uh, if you are interested more into this beautiful hyper accelerated ranks it's in the fence uh, check out my uh, series so far here's the link of our whole playlist and if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more videos and what to say chess is the best of course